Hey guys, this is Mel, and I'm back to talk about Motherland Fort Salem, episode 203, titled A Tiffany, which premiered Tuesday, July 6, 2021, on Freeform. ABC Spark, in case if uh, you have that as well, too. So, one thing I really want to get started on before we get into it, huge spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the episode already, please go do so first, and then come back and see what I have to say about the episode. My other video managers are up on screen, so take a moment to remind yourselves of those. The only thing different, though, is that this video is covering my thoughts the second time around of watching this video instead of my first impression thoughts because, and I'm going to explain it very clearly in case you didn't watch my video that covered 201 and 202, um, ABC Spar accidentally aired 203 um, to its audience on June 22nd. So I watched this episode for the first time thinking that it was the premiere episode only to realize I was very confused and wondering, did I miss episodes? What the hell's going on? I don't know. But not knowing this, I still recorded the episode on my PVR. So thankfully, the following week, which was last week, ABC Spark uh, did a two-hour premiere, allowing for episode one and episode two to air um, so that we're all back on track. But because I do have the PVR recording, I was able to re-watch episode three to do this actual recap for you. And it's probably one of the only times that you're probably going to get a recap video immediately right after the episode has aired on the East Coast. So kind of excited about that because I'm able to actually take the time to talk about it and to like edit it. Not that I don't do so already. It's just I always feel bad that it's always delayed a lot more than I thought it would be due to how long my computer takes to render. So that's just the long winded version as to why you're actually getting it probably if I planned it correctly, why you would actually get it at 11 o'clock p.m on july 6th if you're on the east coast so that's the reason why behind it not because i got some extra special spoiler or anything like that or it's just that mishap that i still had the pvr recording so i figure why not watch it again so let's get right into what happened in this episode i finally found my way about how like to gauge things now so hopefully i'll try to do this in 20 minutes but before we get into it again i mentioned my first video and i wanted to reconfirm it again this episode was in the format of a teaser with six acts. Like I said before, I am, I just graduated from a screenwriting program where traditionally one hour dramas usually take on the teaser in the five act structure. Um, but this one has the six acts with it. It just means more commercials and it means more twists and turns before those commercials, but it's still, uh, it's still, it's still a cool thing to, for me to be able to apply what I learned in school, in school and, and notice it in shows that I like. So, Without further ado, let's get started with what happened in this episode. Timeline-wise, I'm assuming it's one week since the episode, it's since the events of 202, just because, uh, I mean, they don't state it specifically, but the way that they're talking about, like, their classes and, like, uh, and, like, what's been happening and them getting re readjusted to, like, being in war college, it seems like a, a week is enough time to, like, get to know, like, oh, this is what the routine is meant to be. Um... I, it definitely doesn't pick off immediately where the previous episode ended, that's for sure. But I could be wrong. With this show, it sometimes doesn't let you know how long it's been between each episode, so that's something uh, to just keep in mind as well. Uh, episode reminder, though, I'm definitely going to say, just because the the title of the episode, A Tiffany, is in reference to the, the, the Spree storyline, that's kind of going to be my reminder because it alludes to what the Camarilla is using to test out um, Hidden Witches. Um, and the, we'll go into the opening scene, which was uh, General Alder uh, kind of coercing President Wade to approve the order for new testing facilities to find these lost witches. Originally, she was against it, as well as Vice President Silver, but uh, uh, Alder and her biddies ended up doing their, their spell work to kind of get hurt. It's kind of like compulsion with like Vampire Diaries, Vampires and stuff. So it's like kind of getting them to do their bidding. Um, so that's the opening scene there, which is technically the, the teaser, if you will, of uh, the episode. But episode breakdowns or the storylines. I figured, I, I picked out four different storylines and I realized that they're actually probably going to be the four more stable uh, storylines we go throughout this um throughout the next season, and I'll explain why, because the first one is hearing, hearing is the Camarilla's key, second one is matrimonial season, third is mycelia merge, and the fourth one is forgotten soldier. 
Now, with the setup right now, we have a storyline specifically about what the Spree's doing. And I've got, I guess, kind of like the overall bigger picture about this war that's happening among the witches and, and their enemies. Uh, second storyline is dealing mostly with um, Abigail and her, her struggles and the path she's meant to go down or trying to fight herself from not going down. Third storyline is mainly dealing with Rael and her journey. And then the fourth storyline is dealing with Tally and her discoveries. So I feel like throughout the rest of the season, it's still going to fall within these same four. It's just going to fluctuate a little bit, I think. But we'll have to wait and see about that. But first storyline, let's go a little bit more into it. This is where we get Anacosta and Scylla discovering about Jack or or Saudi, who is using some tonal testing on young girls, which is their hearing, to see if they react to any tonal frequency changes. Because apparently, which we see with Scylla, witches are very more are much more sensitive to certain tonal ranges as opposed to someone who doesn't have the blood um so that's kind of what they're reacting to we find out that younger girls uh ears aren't as developed as a little bit older ones so they're now they're going to test a little bit more older and they're going to the schools to do so pretty much putting headphones on and probably playing around with the the sound if the girl doesn't react to it then she's not of the blood or her ears aren't atoned to it but if she is then you'll have any of uh, spell current spell work uh kind of uh and negating itself or or the witch being in discomfort over the sound um which makes sense uh by the end of their storyline they they both knock out jack or anacosta saves Scylla by knocking jack out and this happens at the end of act four of six um so hopefully, I mean, technically Scylla was outed as a witch and then Anacostia kind of outs herself as a witch as well when she speaks some other tongue to him. But hopefully we'll get some answers now that they have him in custody. Second storyline deals with the matrimonial season. And this includes the introduction of the Imper Imper Imperatrix, which we'll talk about later. But we also get told about the Paragon Reception. This is meant to be the start of when the witches are meant to find who they will hand fast with to continue one of their witchly duties of continuing the matrimonial line. So we found out that Abigail is meant to match with Gregorio instead of Adil, and she is not happy about that. Also, her hand fasting is meant to happen at the end of this year. It's earlier than expected. I don't know if they mean this year as in like this season for us, or if this year they mean like the calendar year for Abigail. Because again, I don't know how, how timeline-wise, how far the season is supposed to stretch out. But uh, instead, Ga Abigail doesn't really want to go down this tradition. She wants to make a name for herself aside from just being a bellwether. She wants to prove her worth kind of a thing. Um, so we have her trying to be more uh, resistant of that traditional aspect of being a witch. Tally, on the other hand, is very new to the traditions. Um, so she's very eager to learn and, uh, all that comes with it. She's referred to as a matrifogal daughter. I don't know if that's just Tally specifically being called that or if she just falls into the category of a matrifogal daughter. Um, so that's something that was sparked around. And then we got Rael. She's actually considered an outcross, which is the result of a witch and a civilian match. Um, her mother's uh, hand fasting with a civilian, which is her father, uh, which is Rael's father, sorry, um, is said to be uh, unconventional or incomplete. Uh, according to the Imperial Matrix. Um, so she really is highly suggesting Rael to do the traditional route, but Rael is refusing to do the traditional route, it even even though it is a requirement of the witches. So we do got three different pathways when it comes to the matrimonial season for our, our, for our coven members. Now the third storyline with the mycelium, we find out from uh, Rael that she's been doing a lot of testing and she's not getting anywhere until... Um, she ends up singing the same seed that um, that Scylla had sang to her with the whole death cap flower. And in doing so, it resulted in the mycelium further connecting itself to Rael, pretty much upgrading her vocal cords and uh, building a stronger connection to her, allowing for glowing blue eyes when her when the power is called upon. Um, reason for the vocal cords is now that um, whenever she sings any of the, the seeds or spells if you will as the equivalent um usually you can hear only one voice but now when rael does it it sounds like multiple voices are coming from within her um which is due to the mycelium uh we also had that rael couldn't speak mother tongue 
And now because of the mycelium, she's able to speak it fluently and understand it. Um, so I feel like there's like a transfer of like knowledge in that sense. Also, we see a little bit more about the mycelium power breaking down inorganic matter, like uh, built up walls and stuff like that, but then making organic matter grow out of it, which is the whole mushroom um, spores thing. Uh, we have Adler admitting to Rael that she has not seen anyone do what she is now capable of doing. And that's pretty much saying something because, again, Adler is at least 300 years old. So, uh, no pressure. Uh, when it comes to the fourth storyline with the Forgotten Soldier, this is due to Tally getting more memory flashbacks from her connection to Adler, or Adler. And it leads her to the Redacted Soldier and getting a name for her being Sergeant Nikta Batten. And she accused Adler of having a black heart, possibly due to her killing a bunch of people who had already surrendered, I think, over some stolen work from my understanding. I don't know. But that's me. that seems to strike definitely huge tensions between Nikta and Adler in the past. Um, it, it's definitely, she, uh, Tally also said that the memory flash was a lot more powerful to the point that it moved her to tears, a lot more emotional. Uh, so definitely more, more resonance from that. Uh, the last moments of the episode show Adele finding Abigail trying to create her own uh, war-stopping storm, just like her ancestor Jem Bellwether, before she actually collapses from her throat bleeding due to the vocal strain. And it looked like her eyes are bloodshot as well, too. But this is part of Abigail trying to prove that she could be more than just a Bellwether name, but she can actually prove the talent with it. Um, so there's that. Moving on to characters, uh, we get the introduction of the Pyramatrix, or... Imperatrix, not Matrix, Imperatrix, who is the matriarch of the Imperative, and she focuses on the continuation of the bloodlines. She keeps track of the bloodlines as well as she uh, she figures out which bloodlines should merge together in hand fastings to produce the best traits in the long run. She definitely does not report to Adler. There's a huge tension between them about like who's the boss kind of a thing, um, but there's that. Uh, we also get a little bit about Gregorio. Um, his last name is Shellbark, and he seems to be the only child because on the Imperimatrix's um, bloodline wall, um, Gregorio was, there was only one name beside him. There wasn't any like siblings or anything like that. Uh, but now that I think about it, do any of the witches actually have siblings or do they only just stop at the one child kind of a thing? I don't know, interesting. Um, when we go to tidbits, though, we found out that Tally, Rael, and Abigail are now in different study tracks, though Tally and Abigail share the combat class together, along with Gregorio and M. But maybe Rael is part of that too, but she was off with Isadora doing her more testing. But Rael wasn't actually, like, she wasn't in the combat class and then, like, and then excused out of it. So I'm not sure if she's actually in the class with them or not. Uh, we also see Tally continuing to tutor Penelope, who is now being the poster child for the testing centers. Um, Penelope also revealed that, which also answers one of my previous questions from my previous video, was that Penelope revealed that when she was in the choir, the way she was taught to sing is very differently from how witches are taught to use their throat to sing the seeds. Um, so that answered my question as to why Penelope wouldn't have been outed as a witch sooner if she's been in choir for this long. Uh, we also find out a little bit about Petra through the Imperatrix, um, stating that Petra narrowed down her choice of a suitor for hand fasting down to three men, one of which was Abigail's father. And that is something that Abigail wants the Imperatrix to bestow upon her, allowing her to be able to narrow it down to three choices instead of just telling her, go, go hand fast with Gregorio, which she does not want. Um, so that's something there. Um, also, we find out that new work is exceedingly rare. Also, because I had closed captions on when I saw the video, uh, work and seed were both capitalized. So I'm guessing that's their way of naming their versions of spells and charms, I'm guessing. Um, work, I mean, seed, I'm assuming they're spells because that's like what they've been singing this whole time. Work, I'm guessing, could just be like a group of spells or, or something. Uh, but I just thought it was very interesting to see it capitalized in that way. Uh, but let's move on to a shocking moment of the episodes. Uh, again, because I had already seen the this episode before I was supposed to, everything was pretty much a shock because I didn't know what was happening. But if I really think about it, I guess the, the shocking thing from it after watching one and two 
would be the glowing mushrooms that came after Rael pretty much blew down the wall. Um, the fact that they were glowing first off, uh, but and also their just spontaneous growth afterwards was something I wasn't expecting. But we'll talk about that later. Uh, but let's move on to top three favorite moments. I will have to say I'm loving the Imperatrix. Uh, her vibe, her goal, and like just like she knows her stance and what her job is. And I really love that no one's going to tell her otherwise. Uh, and she's definitely stuck on tradition. So I'm very interested to learn more about the tradition through her. But I also find that bloodline wall tracker thing that she has was very impressive as well. Uh, but also it's kind of, it's impressive just to see like how extensive that history is right there. But it's also very daunting to know that if that's all the witches on that board, then they are really dying out. So I really, I am very interested to, to learn more about the Imperatrix and to learn more history from her about the traditions of this culture. Uh, another favorite I did have was just Rael's new power. Her getting the upgrade with the my mycelium um, colonizing her the throat, allowing her to um, now speak mother tongue. I'm wondering if it's going to do more to Rael, if maybe there's more of a because they're supposed to have a symbiotic relationship between each other. So I'm wondering if maybe it's something more of a connection that's going to be forming between the two of them. But I'm excited to see where it brings. We do see Rael's eyes glowing blue whenever she does tap into that power. Um, so I definitely can't wait to see how that goes. It was just very great to see her have that ounce of control for it during the weapons test. Um, so there's that. And an unexpected favorite I had was Tally and Gregorio, Gr Gregorio at the Paragon reception. Wasn't expecting that at all. I mean, like in the previous episode, I kind of figured that there, there was huge tensions between Abigail and Gregorio. So I figured maybe it'd be like an enemies to lovers thing kind of a thing. But with his support for Tally at the reception and kind of wanting to be her wingman, essentially, because she's literally meant to be there to find, like, her future husband and stuff, right? So, like, it has me wondering if maybe I'm, like, I'm for friendship between Tally and Gorgory, or maybe what if something else brews between the two of them? I don't know. Um, very interested to see. I hope it's not going to be something like Garrett's situation where he was already matched with somebody and she didn't know about it. But, um, yeah, I... I was all for that little show of support there. It wasn't just like, it, it wasn't more of like, okay, let's find let's find ourselves, like let's find a match for both of us at the reception. He was solely focused on, let's find someone worthy of being Tally's match. And I'm like, okay, I, I'm here for this. Like, show me more kind of thing. So we'll have to wait and see about that. But let's move on to top peeves moments. The only peeve I could really think of, and maybe it's just a worry, but I don't know what the mycelium's goal is because when those mushrooms started spontaneously growing after she destroyed the wall and it just grew out of nowhere, I was like, it got me thinking, like, what if it's a virus? Like, what if it literally is a fungus and it's meant to consume, like, a black hole? And what if every time she uses the power, it just grows and grows and grows to the point where it's just all-consuming? And, like, I really hope it's not secretly trying to take over Rael and user as like a dark host or something like that because like i want i could i feel like this mycelium is going to be like a huge change in the game when it comes to power but i have no idea if it's like some other force that's waiting for a, a viable host if it's like really just a plague that's trying to, to to suck away all magic or something i don't know um but with the way that it spontaneously grew the way that it did, it's like, is it is that a good thing if it does that or not? Like, are those mushrooms poisonous? Are they meant f to be used for good for, like, potions or something? I don't know. Do they even use potions in this? I don't know. So, it's not a peeve, it's more of a worry. I have no idea what this mycelium could bring, especially finding out from Isadora that she spent so many years studying it and still knows so little about it. So, th so that has me worried. But let's move on to random questions very quickly. Uh, first one. I know Rael's journey seems to be about her connection to the mycelium and what power can come from their symbiotic relationship. But do you think we'll go back to what made Rael different in season one when it came to her approach to magic? Because that was one of the reasons why she was different from everybody was else was that she was taught magic differently and she was using different approaches and i mean like when she would 
take away other like as a fixer she would take away other people's pain for them and and burden it on herself so i'm wondering will we revisit what the source of all that was about or are we or is that now all forgotten and now it's just all about the mycelium connection between them because i i am still interested about like what made Rael's form of magic very different and maybe that's the reason why the mycelium has forged a symbiotic relationship with her so i i don't know but i do hope we go back to what her original approach to magic was um another question shane brings up a great point about um why the military witches are fighting the spree in other countries i mean i'm also wondering why is that the case i mean that brings the question of like if they're off in other countries then like who's defending the american citizens from the spree and i mean it's a valid point i can understand why the people are angry at the military because it's like they're putting their resources elsewhere when they're meant to protect the, their own people first so like i understand why but i'm really interested on like what the actual answer is because if i was a human in that world i'd be concerned too it's like why are you over there when you're meant to be over here kind of a thing um I mean, it's very different if other countries there did not have any military whatsoever. But if they're going to a country that already has a, a, a like a military of witches there, then it's like, well, well, like what? what? I'm just gonna stop talking. Um, another question is, uh, why are the spree targeting humans if their issue is with the military? I did ask that in the previous video of mine, but that's still something I want to know because I, I want to understand what the two sides are. To see which one, to see which one is correct in their fighting views, because it seems like the way the military is handling it, it seems like things are crumbling down, and I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, another question: Who else is getting the suspicions that Nikta Batten is connected to the Spree or to the Camarilla, based on the last exchange she had with Alder in that flashback that Tally experienced? Because in the previous episode, we got a flashback of her using the jar and smashing it, and then all the seeds in progress just stopped, pretty much rendering everybody defenseless or magicless. And then we've seen that not being used in the military, that reproach being used in the military. The major confirmed that to Tally when she asked that in class. And then her reaction to the, to the Adler killing people who were just surrendering and being completely against that directive has me thinking that she's now an enemy to Adler. Um, so that's a question there. Plus, we also don't know how far back these flashbacks are. Because Adler is 300 years old, we don't know if this was like something from like really back in the day. Because they're in the jungle. Like, What, what, what things are you going to use to di differentiate what time, of, what time of year it is kind of a thing, right? So I don't know. And I'm wondering if we would, I mean, if it's definitely far enough in the past, then there's no reason why we would see Nikta in the present day. But if it's only very recently that all this happens, then I could still see Nikta coming up in the present day at some point. But I don't know. Do you guys, are you guys getting that suspicion at all? Please let me know. Uh, another question. Do you see something brewing between Tally and Gregorio on a romantic level? I mean, would it, I mean, it definitely would seem like an issue with the Imperatrix if she wants Gregorio to end up with Abigail, who wants to be with Adil? Like, I feel like a whole love triangle, Twelfth Night kind of a thing going on, almost. And I'd be kind of for it, but I'm wondering, like, I could see it. So, like, that would bring the drama, and shows like this are all about the drama, right? So it's like, maybe? So yeah, there's that. And last question. will When will Rael and Scylla be reunited? I know they're broken up at this point, but... There's got to be a reunion between the two, right? I mean, there's got to. And then also with that, when is Rael going to reunite with her mom? When is she going to find out her mom is not actually dead, but is a high operative on the spree side? I feel like when she finds about that, I feel like she might switch sides. So I don't know. And if she does, then they have the power of the mycelium with them. Interesting. I don't know. But what do you guys think about that? Please let me know in the comments down below about all your own theories and questions and thoughts and answers. Let me know. Now, moving on to predictions. Because I'm recording this a lot earlier than everybody else is getting the video, I don't 
know what the promo had in store for episode 204. But by the time you're watching this video, just go check out uh, the YouTube channel TV promo. Usually you have all their promos up there for a lot of different shows. Just type up Motherland Fort Salem to see what that promo is. I'm going to do that right after the episode ends, um, which is going to be long after this video is edited. So just keep in mind. But I do know what the synopsis for the next episode reads. And it says, Anti-witch sentiment boils over as the unit defends the first witch testing center at its grand opening. Anacosta and Scylla go undercover to follow the Camarilla. Okay. I'm wondering how much further they're going to go into undercover because we just last saw them taking Jack as potentially a hostage to interrogate. Interesting. Interesting. I'm excited to see what happens next. Um, again, the show is very heavily serialized. So even if you miss one episode or you watch it out of order, it's kind of like, wait, what? If you watch it out of order, it kind of spoils you to any of the episodes that were meant to happen previously. So I do give you a warning about that. Um, but you definitely can get lost if you don't do with them in order. So I do highly suggest that. But other guys, what do you guys think of this episode? What do you guys think of season two so far? What do you think will happen next? Let me know in the comments down below. Love to hear your own thoughts, theories, and opinions about all that good stuff. All found in what, all that good stuff. Also, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and check out my other video if you haven't done so already. Sorry, I was about to merge things together there. Uh, if you want, check out my Tumblr page. Link for that is down below. Reblog, promos, web clips, quotes, gifs, synopses, news, all the good stuff, all found in one place. Go check that out. It's mostly for the other videos I talk about on YouTube. I haven't really started that on Motherland just yet. Motherland is kind of like a show where I just want to watch it for the sake of watching it. Um, it's only just now that I'm doing the videos just because I want to see, like, are there a lot of people out there watching? Is there any way I can maybe talk to you guys too about it? Um, so this is just a test run um, about the videos. But I do hope you guys enjoy watching them. Um, Again, save for WordPress, though. Um, anything I post online is connected to WordPress. A little more organized, a little more detailed, but still a work in progress. As well, same thing goes. It's mostly for the other videos I talked about on my YouTube channel. But otherwise, guys, that's going to be pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for your patience uh, for watching it all the way through. I hope you guys come back next week to see what they say about the next episode. But until next time, guys, this is Mel. Wish you all a great day, a great week, wherever you are. Please stay safe and have yourself a great day. Bye for now.